Hey guys, um, my last video uploaded super quick because smart me turned off my Wi-Fi, just used my, mo my mobile data because I film on my phone and it worked in like 20 minutes. So I'm going to try and do a curriculum uh, video now. Um, I did something a little different this year. I um, I did do a Becca's core. I did their, I'm using a Becca for my second grader. Um, I'm using their math and I'm using their language arts reading uh, spelling program, but for science, history, and geography, I'm using, and handwriting, I'm using something else. So I thought I would share all that with you guys. Um, okay, we'll just start. Um, first of all, their uh, language arts spelling stuff, we have spelling two and poetry. Um, I don't know if we're going to hit the poetry too hard, but um, this is what the first list looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that the first list. And then what I really like is in the back. Oh, yeah, I like this too. They have a glossary right here for dictionary skills. So that way you can get your child used to using a dictionary. And that is a few pages. I mean, it's, it's decent size. And then they have this, which is, which is a tear out that you can um, rip out. It's homework. It's to the parent. Now, obviously, if you homeschool, you are the parent. So you <clears throat> don't need to rip it out. But I like to rip it out and then just give it to my son and then he can just write from this one paper instead of having to remember what page he's on in the book. So, um, and they have 20, oh wow, they have a lot more spelling lists than uh, the first one. Hold on a second. There, there's 32, yes, 32 spelling lists. And this is what the last week of spelling lists looks like. So, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to be doing this for spelling. And um, letters and sounds, too. This is just seat work. They're not really even, it's literally just seat work. Um, but I like having the worksheets. It's ex it's good uh, extra practice for him. That's what it starts with. I mean, ridiculously super easy stuff. Um, and then it goes all the way to reading the story like that. And then you answer questions at the bottom about the story. Sorry if this isn't getting in the camera real well. I can't really tell. And then language. This is another uh, Just Seat Work text. It even says on these two that they are... Sorry, I just shift the camera. Seat Work texts. But, um, like I said, I enjoy it. So, uh, I like this. Look at that. They're going to write a story um, about if all the clocks stopped working. So, and it's, it's, uh, in the front, it says grammar, creative writing, and reading comprehension. So, I like that. You know, it's always extra handwriting and extra ways. I really, it can't hurt to have extra practice. I mean, especially for my son, because he needs all the practice he can get. For sure. All the practice. Um, sorry, disappeared there for a second. I have to get all the rest of his stuff. Hold on one second. Sorry, this was a very impromptu video. Still getting it. Okay, now these are all of his readers for second grade. Um, if you watched my first grade video, uh, there were also a large amount of readers, and I have to say I'm enjoying it. I have figured out that all they do is um, read five pages a day out of and then they get through all the readers so once you figure that out you don't even need the um this part that tells them how many pages that they're supposed to read um so we just start off reading five pages a day and i'll just show you what it starts with this is the first book right yeah this is a and it starts off reading stuff like this really easy um he can read it now uh, which I hope so, because we only have f five weeks left, I think, in our school year. So, yeah, not bad. And then it will go all the way up to, um, oh, there's another reader I want to show you. Okay, so this is no longer a nobody. This isn't a reader. This is a book. Okay, so you have chapter one. And then it has chapter five. So this is, a, this is an actual chapter book. This is one of their first chapter books that they read. Now, I did... And you know those great illustrated classic books um, that have like Oliver Twist and Peter Pan and stuff? I'm currently using them as a tower 
to hold the phone up so I can record. But um, I got I found them at Goodwill for two dollars each, so I bought a ton of them. And um, he's currently reading a page or two out of those uh, a day just for extra practice and to try and help. And uh, the vocabulary is a little more advanced, but uh, I just help him, and it's good because it it um, it's encouraging him to ask questions about history. He was reading um, a tale of two cities, and so we got to talking about the French Revolution and. Stuff like that. So that was really that was a really good conversation. Um, anyway, and then this is the last reader in the series, and it's way advanced from what he's reading now. It's called uh, "Growing Up Where Jesus Lives," and it has like a map of Israel and um, chapter one, "Where Would You Live," and then it has just a whole bunch of stories and stuff about. Uh, growing up where Jesus lived. <laughs> Very self-explanatory. So these are all of his readers. There are a ton of them, in case you can't tell. <laughs> um, so that's that. And then this is the teacher's guide for the phonics reading and spelling. And it's divided up into the first section is just the phonics lesson plans. If I can get to it, they have a lot of pre-stuff. The phonics lesson plans. Now, I did read through, since I did start uh, lesson planning, I did read through the first, like, five or six lessons or so. And the first lesson is reviewing what vowels are. He's been doing that since kindergarten. So I think we're just going to skip, like, to lesson 11, I think, is where they actually start teaching him things that he doesn't already know. So, um, and since we do school year-round, he only has the whole month of June off. And in that time, he'll be reading every day still. So I don't really see a need to review things that he already knows and that we talk about. So, uh, like, lesson seven, we did this exact lesson. It's lesson, like, 60-something, um, I think, this year. So I, I don't see a need to repeat lessons. If he already has the concept, he has the concept. I'm not going to redo it. So anyway, we're going to start with lesson 11. And the really cool thing is that... See, here's lesson 11. This is how their lessons are set up. And it does tell you, I don't know if I've shown you guys this before, it tells you exactly what to say. And then over here, this is lesson 11 continued. Um, where is it? Oh, language. And then it, it tells you a syllable is blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of like grammar, teaching them more about uh, root words and suffixes and pronouns. And we've already kind of started on that, but this just kind of reinforces it. So I like that they have language specifically as a different section. That's really cool. Um, so the beginning of the planner is, or the beginning of the lesson plans is phonics slash language. And then you go down to the reading section, which I'll tell you this now. In the reading section, they have you start with handbook for reading, which we're probably going to skip. That book is so annoying and my son hates reading it. I have it on the shelf over there, but I'm not going to go grab it. It's literally just charts it's just reading charts like uh that chart right there the one outlined in green yeah it's exactly like that chart except the whole book is like that and it's really boring and all it does is review things that he already knows again so i'm not going to do that so i think we're going right till lesson seven where the actual reading starts i don't see the point in delaying it at all so and then i forgot to show you the back so that's all the reading, and then there's spelling back here. Um, one through eight, you're not supposed to use a spelling lesson, a spelling list, but I probably will because, once again, I don't see the point in putting it off. There's no reason not to start, especially in homeschool. It's not like you have to, like, get them acclimated to the classroom or get them used to routines or there's so much new things that they, you know, need to push off doing full school for a while. He can just jump right in because nothing changes it's homeschool so um but they tell you not to start to lesson nine we're starting with lesson one um and that just tells you how to do spelling what the spelling lists are etc super easy stuff and then there's also the poetry curriculum which is in his spelling book which uh we'll probably do he memorizes a couple poems a year but i figure we'll get more into that once um once he starts, uh, once he's able to break poems down, you know what I mean, and learn. Sorry, my nose is really itchy. Sorry if I keep rubbing it. So then the next thing we have 
is dun, 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 dun. sorry I was gone for so long again Beth. and as some of you may know from my first grade uh, Abeka review or show or whatever these types of videos are I don't even know um the book is super thick super thick book they do a front and a back of a page every day uh just like first grade the one thing that i'm really enjoying about this oh and for those of you that hi. care yes hi delilah the princess wanted to say hello um for those of you that care there is a table of contents and it tells you exactly what they're going to be learning in each section section so um like i said those of you that care i just do a quick skim of it usually uh and then this has objectives on this page so it gives you lots of information on what they're going to be covering and things but one thing that i really like about this is the new concept that they introduced the review is at the top of the page now instead of um in the lesson and you just kind of had to guess what it was that they were doing uh, it's right up at the top, so he can refer to that while he's doing it, and he won't forget, you know, what it is. So, it starts off doing the penny and the dollar bill, all stuff he knows. It's really easy, and it goes, they cover so much, so much. Um, this is all stuff that he knows still. Oh, sorry, my daughter came up and hit the table and hugged me. Thank you, princess. I love you, too. She's very cuddly today. Um, this is, this is all stuff we're doing right now, so I don't understand why it's in here, too. But, um, stuff like that, and then, he wanted to be in the video, too. Adding to the hundreds place. Okay, go finish coloring. He's a goose. Um... This is really all stuff he's doing now. Kind of makes me want to just stop for the year. <laughs> um, where is it? I just saw it. Oh, here we go. This is new. This is a good example. Carrying to tens, hundreds, and thousands places. And then it teaches them um, how to carry in the thousands. Now, this year, um, I can actually get his book and show you. Okay, this is his one this year. We stopped ripping out the pages about halfway through the school year because I was... I literally have just math pages, like, laying around my house. I was sick of it, so we stopped. And this year, if I can show it to you. Do, 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 do. I just saw it. Now that I'm trying to do it on a video and you guys are bored and sick of me flipping through a math book, they are not going to, it's not going to be here. Well, that stinks. Um... Anyway, it teaches them, oh, well, no, that's not what I wanted either. Do, 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 do. Hi, Noah, thank you. Okay. He's going to be doing this next week. Um, write the sums, and it teaches them how to do that, add to the hundreds with leftover digits. So, um, the thousands is kind of a new concept, but not really. Um, and then, Lila, why don't you go put on Octonauts? Thank you. Uh, there's fractions in here, which he's already doing fractions, but this is more fractions. And, I mean, all this stuff is, uh, there's some multiplication down there. So, uh, the book covers quite a bit of stuff. There's division. I just saw it. Well, I saw it. You're just gonna have to take my word for it, because I can't flip that page back, and I'm sure you guys are sick and tired of it by now. Um, oh, there's division right there so um that's just a sample of I like to look through the math books the most because I feel like math more so than anything since it uh it develops so much on what you've learned previously you really cover a lot in math and you can really tell a difference um the last page of the math book looks like that so that's just the, all the things they're going to learn uh, this year in math. So, and then I got the test and speed drills book. I probably won't do the speed drills. Um, I'm not a big fan of speed drills. 
Um, I know my son knows it. He just takes them longer than the two minutes. Hold on one second. Sorry, they were fighting over the remote. I know. Anyway, um, I'm not a big fan of speed drills. Uh, I don't, I don't like them. They're not my favorite. Uh, I know he knows it. It just takes him longer than the one minute that uh, they give him to do it. So, and then I got the arithmetic charts and games. And the answer, I don't know if you can hear them, they're arguing about what to watch on TV, so I apologize in advance because I'm not going to holler at them again. Um, and then this is the Arithmetic 2 uh, lesson plan book. There's a scope and sequence in the front for those of you that like that sort of thing. I don't particularly care what's in the scope and sequence. If I can find it again, where did it go? Do, 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 do. There it is, right there. So... Scope and sequence, scope and sequence, blah, 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 normal stuff. Okay, so that's it for all the Abeka stuff that I'm doing. Um, now we're going to move on to the other things. Um, I have his handwriting and his health book coming. I ordered them from Christian Book um, a couple days ago. I don't remember, but they're going to be here Monday. Today's Friday, so they'll be here soon. Um, for science, I'm using the very popular Exploring Creation with Astronomy. Well, the Exploring Creation series, not specifically the astronomy part. Um, with the junior... Of course, I can't do it in the same shot. Junior Astronomy Notebooking Journal. Um, I really, really like this. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's for kids who aren't huge writers, either don't want to write or can't write. Uh, the kids that don't enjoy it and it's just like pulling teeth so you get two coloring pages with every chapter every chapter every lesson every week there's two coloring pages I'll leave it at that um, and then there's just a little spot for them to write some of the facts they learned about the astronomy and there uh, and then you have a I can't say that word monomonic I'm saying it wrong I guarantee you I'm saying it wrong I'll learn how to pronounce it it'll be fine uh, and then there's copy work, which is scripture copy work. That is one of the reasons why uh, people like this series so much, because it talks about it's science and the Bible, science and Christianity, and the same thing. So it just proves that science doesn't, um, uh, argue with scripture. Science and scripture support each other. So... That's how it starts, and there's very nice color photos and diagrams and lots of lots of things for the kids to look at while you're reading. I love this picture of the sun. So um, they have several different, uh, in case you don't know, they have several different uh, topics. There's exploring creation, there's botany, there's flying creatures, there's swimming creatures, there's land animals, there's insects. They have a ton of different ones. Um, I let my son pick, and... This is what he picked, so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, my cousin is uh, going to, well, actually, he's graduating next month to be a, he's a literal rocket scientist, so he will probably be helping us with uh, how far things are and how to build things like going to space and stuff like that. I'm excited to take full advantage of that opportunity. Um, for history, we are doing a uh, story of the world. Um, I got this from a friend. Uh, this is, here's the book, and then for the... Uh, like map pages and stuff. I saw this on you on somebody else on YouTube. I don't remember who, but somebody else had uh, taken out the pages and then three hole punched them, and that way they had access to uh, all the maps and everything at one time, and they could just flip through. And I really like that idea because before it was just in a file folder, and I was scared it was going to get like dumped out all over and it would take me forever. So um, I've just put them in here. Um, I like Story of the World. It's not a Christian approach. Uh, they do cover Christianity in here because, I mean, Christianity is a part of history. It did happen. Uh, but it's not the Christian perspective of it. But I'm okay with that for right now. Um, there's four Story of the World books. And then the Mystery of Histories is the one that combines the biblical history with the secular history. And I really like that. But I think it's just not quite his his cup of tea right now so we're gonna do all four I, I already tested the story of the world with him and he really likes it because I'm just reading him stories and he loves it so um we're gonna do that 
uh, the, all four of them, and then by, maybe by that time he'll be ready to do the Mystery of Histories, and then we can do the Mystery of Histories, and we can bring them together. So that is my hope with that. Um, I'm excited. to uh, History is my favorite subject, so I'm probably going to spend like two hours teaching him history, and he's going to be so sick of it. I don't care. And then for geography, we're just going to do this. It's the uh, Beginning Geography Workbook. It's a page, two pages a week. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think, is what I'm doing it on. I don't know. And it's just literally easy peasy stuff. And then um, it goes into maps and state borders. And then he does, uh, if I can find one, landforms and body of wa bodies of water. So it kind of teaches him a little bit of everything geography-wise. He's in second grade really should start doing geography um for my daughter i am doing um the get ready for the code uh which is the prequel to explore the code she's in preschool but i'm gonna kind of treat it like kindergarten in the sense that she's gonna have more work to do um we kind of did a preschool this year she's four now um and she just traced her name and colored and counted monkeys and you know all the fun stuff um but she really wants she loves doing school so I decided I would uh, get her more stuff. So she's going to be doing the Get Ready for the Code, Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. Um, I don't have any of that with me, uh, but it's coming in the mail. Um, so Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. What else is she doing? Is it sad I have to open up my planner to figure out what else is it? Oh, I have a math workbook for her coming. It's just counting monkeys, basically. And she's going to have a morning work type thing where it's going to be the day of the week, the date, trace the month, uh, what's the weather outside, you know, the, the fun little things that preschoolers like to do. And we're also going to be doing Latin. Sorry, I forgot I had my Latin up here until just now. Aren't you so glad I did an impromptu video, guys? I know you're just loving it. Okay. So, my Latin, I got, it's called Latin's Not So Tough. I got it from Christian Book, level one, and it's super, 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 super easy. Um, you write the letters as you write the letters across each line, and then it says what the A says. So, the short line, and then it says, tells you, you know, the short line above... Certain Latin vowels is called a macron. I'm probably saying that wrong, too. That's okay. Um, so they have that kind of stuff, and it goes through the whole alphabet and things like that. And the kit also came with uh, these work text, which is this teeny tiny little booklet. I mean, super tiny. Um, this is the answers only answers key. And then this is the test, quizzes and tests, um, level one, what it was, what's this page, oh, that's just this, okay, so I haven't really looked through this too much, and then these are the flashcards, flashcards on a ring, so that's pretty cool, it comes with, comes with the ring and the flashcards, so, are we doing Latin too? Very ambitious school year this year, but he's in second grade, so it's time I start slack. I stop slacking off. I've been slacking. Um, for Bible, I have found that I don't. I don't know how to how to say this without sounding like I'm uppity, but I swear I'm not uppity. I'm just a normal person. I found I don't really like a lot of the Bible curriculums out there. I feel like they're too babyish. Um. My son's grown up in church. We've told him all the stories of the Bible. He knows all the stories. So a lot of the curriculum just focuses on the Bible stories. So what I've been doing is we've been going through the minor prophets. Uh, today we started on um, Malachi. And we're just going through the minor prophets and talking about the Israelites and what they did and how that applies to life today and blah, 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 whatever. So um, not whatever. You guys know what I mean. Um, so that's what we're doing for Bible. Uh, we're just using... Sorry, my old Bible. This is the Bible I had when I was in high school. Um, and I'm just, because it's the only NIV we have in the house. My husband and I like ESV. Um, but sometimes that is written, the grammar's kind of 
backwards and the words are different and it's kind of harder for him to understand. So uh, he's doing the NIV. We're reading the NIV just so the words are easier for him to understand. Uh, but he will eventually move up to ESV. Um, I am... <laughs> I'm going to get on my soapbox for just a teeny tiny second. Bear with me. Um, I'm not a big fan of the King James Version. Um, if you study the how the versions of the Bible were written and where they came from and things like that, you will find that the King James is actually not uh, correct <laughs> in some of the translations of the words. Um, but a lot of people like it. I... Did I grew up in church. I grew up with the King James Bible, so I completely understand. Um, but because I knew how to read King James when I when I studied Shakespeare in high school, it was very easy for me to read and understand. And that is one of the advantages that I had over the rest of my classmates was it wasn't hard. It's not hard for me to read and understand Shakespeare because of the King James Version. So I do want him to learn to read the King James Version and understand what it means simply because it makes uh, studying other things easier. But I do not like the King James Version. I don't like um, the way it translates a lot of words. And a lot of my friends like it. So I'm sorry if I offended you. But that's just how I feel. So um, anyway, uh, I think that's it. This video is 26 minutes. Aren't you guys just so lucky? Anyway, um, I will talk to you guys later. I'll leave a comment if you have a question about something or need to see something more in detail. And um, hopefully I will be back soon. I don't know when. But hopefully I will be back soon with another video. Bye, guys.